week two of our missions conference this year. Every year we try to highlight some of our missions efforts and strategic partners globally as well as locally. And uh, today we're going to target some of the ones in our own backyard and some of the ministries we partner with. And so thank you for being here today to be a part of this and our guests who are with us today as well that we'll introduce to you in just a few moments. When I was in high school, uh, freshman in high school, I, I was a part of a church in the Tacoma area, my home church, Spanaway Assembly of God Church, and we had a ministry, a busing ministry, and what we would do is go into the community and uh, knock on doors and invite kids to come to Sunday school and ride our church bus, and surprisingly, parents let them go, right? You know, and nowadays it wouldn't, maybe, but uh, and we, mo- we brought most of them home in the afternoon. But uh, I think they looked at it as free babysitting, maybe. But it it was great to see and to hear over the years uh, the lives that were changed, not just kids, but families whose lives were changed because they came to know Jesus. And literally hundreds would come on a weekend on our bus ministry. And and so I I grew up in a church that was committed to our community. And so that's always been a part of my DNA and kind of culture is wanting to be a part of a a church family that's making a difference in our community. And, you know, it's interesting is thinking back to that this week as I was preparing for this morning. I was thinking about uh, in those years, my sophomore year in high school, uh, a young gal gave her heart to Jesus and came to know Jesus and became a part of that bus ministry. I was what was called a bus captain. What that meant was I was the one responsible for that bus as it went out on the weekend, going on Saturday mornings, knocking on doors. And I had a bus secretary. She was in charge of keeping all the details and everything straight, attendance and all that. And it was Gail. And so after she came to Christ, she got right into ministry and kind of grew up with this passion to help people know Jesus as well and find and follow Jesus. And And so now we've been at it together for 41 years and uh, doing that in life. And and so it's kind of fun to see in the early stages of her life, uh, getting on board with that and recognize that. And many of you know her story. She was raised in a home, single mom, and and, uh, they they were far from God, didn't know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. And and again, in her sophomore year, she came to meet Jesus. and, And it was kind of, we call it missionary dating. I couldn't I wouldn't date her if she wasn't a believer, so she got saved so we could date. No, that's not why, but, <laughs> but uh, so it fits with missionary weekend, you know, it's kind of missionary dating, I don't recommend, but uh, anyway, it worked. But uh, so anyway, we've, uh, we've been together for a long time, telling, helping people know Jesus. I've give, we've given our lives to that, to help people come to find and follow Jesus, and uh, we're grateful for that opportunity. It's one of the reasons why I love pastoring this church is because this is a church that's always been a part of reaching into our community, as well as our world, as well as making a difference in our world. And it's always been a mission-forward, focused church. And, uh, and I love that about faith. You know, this church, some of you don't know the story, but this church was launched. It was, it was built from, it was started from a church across the river in Richland, Richland Assembly of God Church. In 1957, there were a group of people in that congregation who looked across the river. They looked east across the river to Pasco. The bridge wasn't there connecting the two cities. There was the, a green bridge and the blue bridge, I guess. But, <clears throat> but they, they wanted Pasco to have a gospel presentation, a Pentecostal presentation. And so they sent a group of people over here to start this church. It started in an old dance hall in downtown Pasco, down near 4th. And it was started in a storefront church there, It's moved moved several times over the years, most recently from Sylvester out here in 1987 and uh, planted that and built that building there. And then we added this 15 years ago, but that's the roots of this church. It was because of people just like you who cared about people that were outside of the walls of their building and wanted to make a difference and have influence. And so we're grateful for that. We're grateful for that mission work uh, from years ago, 62 years ago now, and uh, it's never wavered in the purpose. Faith was launched with the idea of that mission forward focus, and it's never wavered. Whether it's, it's from a, a kids 
in our church area or kids in Africa making a difference there, whether it's in the kids in the foster care system or in our school system, as you're going to hear about today, whether it's people coming out of recovery or in the jails and transitioning back into society from preschool to the nursing home. It's been a church that's committed to reach into our community. And we want the fingerprints of faith, the fingerprints of Jesus to be not just in Africa and Europe and parts of our world, but in our own community as well. So we're committed to those causes. Last week, if you were here, you had opportunity to hear about some of our partnerships with missionaries and strategic partners in different parts of the world. We saw a video clip of a couple of our missionary family, our strategic partners in Thailand, and what they're doing to make a difference in in 77,000 different villages, planting churches in those areas of the world that don't currently have a witness of Jesus. We heard from Matt and Cheryl Talman who are doing a work in East Africa and uh, helping with kids that are in poverty who've lost parents because of AIDS and, and their, their f- f- uh, village there that they've created, a children's village, and they told the, a great story of how God used a rooster to change a village and change a people. And if you missed it, you can go online and hear that message. But it was a great one. But faith is a church that cares about people. And we're doing everything we can, short of sinning, to help people know Jesus. And we're committed to that cause to do whatever we can to help people find and follow Jesus. If you are here two weeks ago, you had a chance to see at our annual business meeting some reflections on that. And you heard us talk about the 100 people that gave their hearts to Jesus last year. 38 people baptized in water uh, here at Faith, and, and uh, 32 people experienced a mission trip of some kind and sharing Jesus in different parts of our world and community. And the fact that, that uh, we gave away nearly $360,000 this past year. So as you give in the offering, much of that money goes back into our community. It's some of the ministries you're going to hear about today, but also into parts of our world that need to hear about Jesus. 18% of our income we gave away last year. That's significant. Why? Because it shows we care about our community. We care about our world. And we're not just a club. It's not just about us gathering together and tell each other how good we look and then trying to beat the Nazarenes to the restaurant. Um, but it's much bigger than that. And, uh, and so we thank you for being a part of faith. Why is it a high priority? Uh, because we're called... We believe we're called not simply to go to a church, but God calls us to be a church and be the church in our community. And so we're committed to that cause. There are a couple of Bible verses I want to launch with today, and then I want you to meet some of our special partners locally that we work with. The first verse is taken out of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And it says this, you're the, you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. If you've ever been in darkness, you recognize the importance of even a simple little candle that you light or a match that you light. God has called faith. He calls us as believers to be a light in a dark world. We, you and I, are a part of a world that desperately needs hope, and God calls us to be bearers of hope to them. And it's as you share your faith, as you live your life, before the people that you work with, you live near, uh, that, that you encounter at a grocery store, whatever, to let them see the light of Jesus reflected in you and to be good examples of that process. Matthew 28, 19 is a verse of scripture familiar to many. We call it oftentimes as the Great Commission, but it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations or all peoples and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And again, that is what the commission was given to his people, followers of the way, followers of Jesus, to go not just to one building, but to go to our world and share Jesus and help people come to find Jesus and follow him, become disciples of Jesus. And uh, that's what we endeavor to do here at Faith each week. And thank you for being a part of that. I love the verse in Matthew chapter 25. There's a couple of them, verse 35, 36, and 40. And it was Jesus speaking this words. And the disciples asked him, they said, when 
when did we see you? When did we do you, your work? When did we, and he said these words, he said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. You needed, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. As you've done it unto them, he says, you're doing it to me. So today, when you hear about some of these ministries and how we're reaching into our school system, we're reaching into the homeless community in our, in our community, <clears throat> those who need help with food, uh, as you, those coming out of the jail and prison system, think of Jesus' words to his disciples. And he says, as you're doing it to them, you're doing it for me. You're doing it for me. The last one I want to share with you is James 127. And it says this, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by this world. Part of our ongoing efforts with Royal Family, helping kids in the foster care system. Just this week, I talked with a someone who's going to come and talk to us about foster care in our community and the need in our area. And we'll be hearing from them in May, early May. But it's, it's, it's recognizing the, the task before us. It, there's something for all of us. We can't do everything, but all of us can do something. All of us can do something. Have you found your something? Have you found your something? You know, there are a lot of more verses even that talk about this that compel us to give ourselves away for the sake of other people. But, but we recognize there's so much more to life than simply coming on a weekend. And there's a real, there's a high value of being engaged in, in, in being a partner and working with and praying for. And uh, last summer, last Sunday, we highlighted some of our strategic partners, again, globally, and today, you know, let me say this. At the end of the gathering last week, I directed your attention, as you may recall, if you were here, to this card, as we always do. And on the bottom, it says, I want to, and there's some next steps there. And uh, just about weekly, someone checks a box saying, I want to accept Jesus Christ. I want to follow Jesus. We celebrate those. Some say, I want to get into a group, a life group, a small group. Some say, I want to be baptized in water. Then there's a blank space here, a next step. And last week, at the close of the gathering, <clears throat> I challenged people who may be given an offering, given the offering when it comes by or online, but they've not yet stepped up to give specifically toward missions, towards some of these groups you're going to hear today, or toward a missionary like we heard of last week, strategic partner. And so some people I challenged to step up and say, I want to start doing that. Count on me, I'm all in. And I asked him to put down in this little blank the amount, $50, $100, $25 a month. I'll start giving. Or for some it was, I'll increase my giving to missions this amount this next year. Happy to tell you today, 13 people responded on there. $575 a month is, is new, new monies is given toward missions. That enabled us to be able to say to Mike last week, as we went to lunch and took him to lunch to say, we believe in your ministry in East Africa and we want to be a partner with you. $100 a month we'll give you and your ministry to help further, again, the message of Jesus in East Africa. It's because of your giving. And uh, I challenge some today, maybe you weren't here last week, maybe you were, you've been thinking about it, but you recognize, you know what? I need to get into that. I want to be a part of that as well. Today, you can mark your card there as well in that regard and drop it in the box and I'll give you some instructions at the end today as, as we leave. But today we want to introduce you to some of our strategic partners locally. And I'm excited about this. I'm going to invite Pastor Matt and Victoria to come up. And as they come, they're going to be talking with us about a ministry that we launched a few years ago with our local elementary school in the backyard, which is Ruth Livingston Elementary. So Matt. Yes, it was uh, almost three years ago now. 
uh, that we wanted to get plugged in with the community. We heard about other churches that uh, were partnering with one of their local schools, kind of adopting them and taking them under their wing. And so we thought, you know what, let's do that with Ruth Livingston. And uh, it's a great school. Our kids actually attend there. And uh, since they've started attending, so we started being involved before they were in kindergarten, and now they're in first grade. And to see there's so many teachers and admin there that love Jesus and are following Jesus and are committed to impacting their students beyond education, but also giving them the glimmer of hope of Jesus every single day. And so we were like, yeah, we want to be a part of that. You were making a difference and impacting our community. How can we help? How can we help? And so it kind of started out small, just us coming in. Showing them, hey, there's no catches. We're not looking for anything in return. We just, we just want to serve you. We want to be a part of what you're doing. And so uh, we just helped with some events, uh, helped provide some supplies, stocked their teacher lounge and staff lounge with some food a few times. And then they started coming to us and saying, hey, would you guys be willing to help with this? Would you be willing to help uh, maybe provide some clothes for some of our kids that are in need? Would you be willing to help out? In other areas, and the best one so far that we're loving that we've been able to launch is they came to us and said, hey, we have some students that come in on after the weekend, and we can tell they have not eaten properly over the weekend. Would you guys be willing to help provide food for them over the weekend? And we were like, yes, we would love to do that. And so we've been able to partner with Second Harvest and send home. There's 25 kids a weekend now from Ruth Livingston that go home that didn't weren't getting food, that now because of uh, your giving and because of our opportunity to serve alongside Ruth Livingston. They have food on the weekend, which is really cool. And so we wanted to bring Victoria up here because she's been a part uh, almost from the beginning and helped leading the team. I just wanted to hear a little bit from her perspective, from your perspective, Victoria. Uh, what was it that drew you to being involved with serving Ruth Livingston? Good morning. Well, the first thing that I did was I got involved with the Christmas program because it's just delightful, right, to give kids gifts and especially children who may not get something. But when we started the talking about the needs of the community and the backpack program and these kids at the school that are hungry, I was hooked. That's very cool. That's very cool. The, and that was one of the other areas. Ruth Livingston came to us with some kids around Christmas. Hey, we have some families in need, and that's been a really cool deal. What's been your favorite part, though? of being a part of this team and serving with this ministry? Um, I'd say it's twofold. I'd say the first thing is that it helped me develop relationships. I met some people through the office that I kind of fell in love with and developed friendships and working out projects with. And the second was being able to give to my community. Um, many of you don't know me. I had a big industrial accident several years ago, and I can no longer travel. And I loved missions. And last week resonated for me when he said, we are missionaries to everyone. And so we, I get the opportunity to still do missions work. I just do it down the street now. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. So leading the team, being a part of the team, is there still opportunity for people to get, is there still a need for people to be involved? And, and if so, what, what does that look like? There are so many opportunities. We would like to grow this group. Um, we need several things. If you'd like to be involved in the team that puts together the yearly sort of calendar and does a foresight for it, you'd be welcome. We need people who would be interested in like helping with a certain activity. Mm -hmm. You can um, get involved financially. You may say, you know, $5 a week, I'd like to take on one of those children for the year. They get food from um, the entire school year from the beginning till the end. And um, there's another thing we do a Second Harvest, and I'd love to see Faith um, really show up. It's for a... Um, they put together meals at the Second Harvest, and it's this incredible event. It's two hours long, and last time we did over 5,000 backpacks. And so it's a wonderful way to get your kids involved. I took all my four grandkids, and they have been hounding me. Nana, when's the next one? <laughs> That's so cool. Second Harvest is who we partner with that helps provide the kits. $5 per kit to send the kids home. And so, like we said, there's other churches in the area that are doing the same thing for some other, or other schools. And so there's a day we all get together, put those kits together, over 5,000 kits, and then, and then another time, uh, I think each quarter is what happens, or about twice a year. And so it's a very cool opportunity. If you are interested in serving Ruth Livingston and being on that team, please mark it on your connection card today. Say something on there about serving Ruth Livingston. We'll get in contact with you. We want to get you plugged in and get you on the team. It's a great opportunity. Thank you so much, Victoria. You heard the term partnership. 
that, that uh, really explains so well what we're trying to do. Why recreate the wheel? Why not partner with somebody who's already doing something so we can be more efficient and effective with our funds? And uh, re we have people. We have resources of people to help serve in these areas. So this is kind of a fun one we're doing with the school in our backyard. The next one, I want to invite John to come up and Michelle, if they will. John and Michelle are no strangers to faith and been here for years. And then uh, they went away for a while down to the southeast part of our country. And the Lord delivered them from there and brought them back home. <laughs> and, uh, and so they're back with us in the Tri-Cities. And what's really cool about this is God brought them back to head up a particular ministry that started at faith, started through faith uh, about 60-some years ago, right? I mean, almost. In 1966, a ministry was launched by a guy, Bob Dickinson, and uh, helped reach into our jails and the prisons and to help transition people from that prison and jail back into society. And so over the years, there's been a variety of ministries there, and John and Michelle have come back to help serve and lead that ministry. Tell us a little bit about it, John, will you please? Well, Dayspring Ministry, we're in a, a new season. Um, Bobby Dickinson and my father-in-law, Ron Baker, who were the founders of the ministry, started in the jails and prisons, and then it expanded. And God has called us to take it back and shift back to the jails and the prisons where the ground is fertile for lost souls. Um, in the last, we've been here for five months, and in the five months that we have been here, we've seen well over 30 men commit their life to Jesus Christ. So we've been honored, and we go yeah. into four prisons. Amen. That is a God, God Amen. Be the glory. We've been honored to go into the prisons and preach the gospel. We've been honored to go into Benton County and Franklin County and preach the gospel. God keeps opening doors. Uh, to, even to our amazement, we sit back and in, in amazement. Pastor stole all my scriptures today, so I can't even quote any of those. But, out, you know, out of Matthew 25, that's what we're based on. When we do it for them, we do it for Christ. Yeah. And uh, we're just seeing a shift in our ministry. And the shift is good because we're no longer going to feed out of a building because we're coupling with the Union Gospel Mission, and we're sending it to them who does a fantastic yeah. job. And like Pastor said, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. They've got this thing down to a That's science, good. and we're pretty impressed with them. So yeah. we're going to couple with them to, to go into that. That's good. I was kidding John in the first gathering. I said, John, when you go into these uh, jails and prisons for services, aren't you afraid maybe they won't let you out? <laughs> but uh, they've let him out so far. I don't know what the deal is. Sometimes. Yeah. He happens to be standing next to the new Franklin County chaplain for women, right? That's right. In the jail. So That's congratulations. <clears throat> I told Michelle this morning, I said, man, I wish you to wear your uniform. And uh, she goes, it's not in yet. But uh, he, he has to call her boss now. <laughs> I think he always did. But I mean, it was kind of, <laughs> if you're a smart man, John. Michelle, you were involved in, in services in jail for the women and so on. And how many times a week do we have jail services at different times? And Well, uh, we have several services that we hold within the county, Franklin County and uh, Benton County. Uh, approximately 25 plus services um, locally here. Because there's quite a few. I can't keep, I'm trying to keep track yeah. of all of them. But there's several. And that's where a need were for volunteers. And then also we have uh, about 20 or more in the uh, state prisons. Yeah. And we're getting ready to take on uh, Pendleton Penitentiary back. We used to go in years ago, and we're going to bring that back on. Uh, so we're going to need some needs there and yeah. volunteers. So if someone here today uh, might be interested in being a part of the jail ministry uh, and going home at night, <laughs> um, what would that look like? What do they need to do to do that? Well, get connected with Day Springs, obviously, and we'll be outside if you're interested in that. At the Information at Center. At the Information Center. And one of the prerequisites, of course, is that you have to know Jesus Christ as your, like Pastor said, your personal Lord and Savior. Um, one of the things we're seeing that as God increases in these last days and he is spreading his gospel, so are deceptions being spread. So it's, it's just vital and important that we get in there with people that are solid in Jesus Christ to share the gospel with them. And if that's your heart's desire to reach out, boy, come and be a part of us. We give a small training. And then of course, you'll have to go through a training with the facility that you enter. But there's a great need for people. That door is so wide open. And that's such a good mission field. 
yourself. And the, the biggest thing is, is that God, and I've always said this, God will get you because he did it to me. Mm -hmm. I lived it. He'll get you where he needs to get you so he can get you. Yeah. And so when they go into the prisons, God is getting them where he needs to get them so that their hearts are ripe for the gospel. So it is our goal and our desire is that we get in there and minister the gospel. That if there's a slot open, we jump into that slot so that we can tell them the truth that won't only set them free, but will set them free indeed. Yeah, that's great. Let's uh, give them a hand. Can we do that? They will be... They'll be at the information center if you have questions and uh, maybe would like to consider uh, being a part of one of those ministries, that ministry, you can stop in and talk with them. This segues well to the next one. I'm going to invite Jeff to come. And as he comes, we're going to talk about uh, the Union Gospel Mission because, in fact, we're going to show Keeper News had this clip just a few weeks ago about the mission and what they're doing in our community. Watch this. I'm going to invite Jeff to join me, if you will. Jeff Daniels, Jeff and Janice coordinate and help lead uh, our, one of our ministries with Union Gospel Mission. You know, we're blessed here at Faith. We've got two individuals that sit on the board. Dave Little is one of them. Wayne Ferens is another that sit on the board of the Union Gospel Mission. If you haven't been down to see that facility, they did a fabulous job putting this together in our community. It's a great, it's a great inroad to help minister to those in need. Jeff and Janice stepped up about a year and a half ago, wasn't it, for the Christmas dinner? We launched it? Yeah, it was like, right after uh, we well, did the first initial Christmas dinner down yeah. there. We stepped up and took one Sunday a month to uh, start feeding everybody down there. So the second Sunday night of the month, and it starts at 5 now? Is that right? We actually serve at 5. Uh, we start cooking anywhere between 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Volunteers start showing up somewhere around 4 o'clock to, to prep the food to be served and start cutting desserts and things like that. Yeah, so, so they serve, what is it, over 100 people, isn't it? We're averaging about 116 people a Sunday. Yeah, so they have different churches like Faith that come in and help serve and connect with the dinners. We, we try to pay for the supplies. We purchase supplies to help utilize and also, the, the mission has a number of great source supplies, but we try and partner with them to help provide that meal and serve and get our people's faces there and just make them feel welcome. I remember the first night we started, the, the, uh, it was a Christmas focus, the Hope and Help for the Holidays. Remember that a year and a half ago? And uh, we launched that and went down there. We wanted to, to do a, a nice dinner for them and to get to meet people. How can you be involved is some will serve the meal, some will cook the meal, but some will move in the audience and kind of sit and visit with people and get to connect with them there. And I think we have, what, 15 to 20 people each week just about now? We're averaging 15 to 20. It's been upwards of 25. Yeah. And there's some future things that they're looking to add. Do you want to share some of that with us? The lunch pieces? Do you remember that? And, the, and another dinner? They're looking to add another dinner on another group coming in? Yeah. We're looking to add one more Sunday service. Um, Right now, it's the first Sunday of the month. We're looking to maybe possibly move that to a different one, but the first Sunday is the one that's open. Uh, there's, you can go down and just mentor people, uh, just sit and talk with them and help them through whatever problems they're going through. There's the, the river outreach where you just get with Jose and you walk the river. Uh, and I say river, but it's anywhere in the Tri-Cities that there's homeless people. They're trying to get them off the street and get them back into society to where they can feel loved and wanted. Uh, there's the women's mission where, and I'm not 100% sure on this one, but the, the mission's going to provide the lunches and dinners, and uh, they're looking for people to take those <coughs> over to the women's mission and serve the women uh, lunch and dinner every day of the week. Um, lots of options. Lots of options going on. We're looking at starting... Uh, a small community garden to grow uh, vegetables for the hey, this, mission. This is kind of a cool idea. This just came. I mean, this is the last, I mean, it's hot off the press. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't still... even told our board yet. Oh, well, <laughs> plug your ears if you're <laughs> yeah. on the board. Wait, get this. So north, on the, off the north piece of our property, the parking lot behind Matt and Kaylee's house, is a lot. We park our vehicles on it. And uh, Jeff, we've been talking with Jeff and, he, Jeff, Jeff's Lawn Care Service is the business they own. 
and he and his team have offered to come in and put in irrigation on that lot. And our hope is to begin small, but that we could start growing vegetables for the mission on our property, on the north property. And so some of you may have an interest in being a part of that. We're planning to have a team meeting next Sunday after the second gathering. Isn't that right? Yes. 1130. And if you're interested in being a part of any aspect of the mission piece, we want to encourage you to come to that meeting. We'll be talking about some of the options there. But one of them is to help initially start this garden that we think would be kind of cool to be able to provide the mission with resources and vegetables, which big deal. And so, uh, so anyway, that's going to be awesome. But Jeff, we appreciate you and Janice and your involvement, your heart for this. And uh, God's using it in a great way. So thank you so much for doing that. Let's give, it, give him a hand. Can we You're do that? Welcome. Thank you, buddy. This segues well into the next conversation. I'm going to invite Amanda to come up and Gail, if they will, at this time. And uh, this is a new ministry just coming into our community and part, in a partnership with, uh, with the Union Gospel Mission, and it's called Grace Kitchen. Talk to us about yeah, that. Let me introduce my friend Amanda to you. Amanda, we had the privilege of sitting over coffee, and you got to share with me really your heart and the dream that God has put on your heart, specifically for women in poverty in the Tri-Cities. And I'm realizing now that you are connected with almost every one of these yes, um, that, uh, ministries that we've already heard about. You're, you're going to partner with them and probably even our new community garden, some fresh fair. So tell me a little bit about um, what God is. I love what God put on your heart. Tell us about your new ministry. Yeah, so Grace Kitchen is a job training, discipleship, employment program for women here locally in the Tri-Cities. So we seek to come alongside women who are homeless, lost, hurting, marginalized, and abused, and equip them with job skills, confidence, so that they can become self-sufficient and Christ-dependent. And we do all of this through the production of our dried food products. They're gourmet dried food products. You can see the baskets out there that I have on display, as well as launching catering and eventually a storefront cafe. Yeah, so God has put quite a dream on your heart. Yes. It's, it's amazing, but you start off small and then just um, hearing some of the things that God is going to broaden even more and reach more women in our community. Um, so how can we help you? What is that? What will that look like for you? Sure. Can I just um, first of all talk about um, just? Yeah. Okay. Go. All right. So helping for for being a new ministry. So we just obtained ownership of the old Union Gospel Mission Men's Shelter down there on Second Avenue. So when God birthed this vision and dream in my heart, we started praying right away that God would position us in a commercial kitchen that was in close proximity to the Union Gospel Mission Women's Shelter and accessible on the bus line. So praise God, he has, he has given us this building, 8,200 square feet. It is an old 1913 historic building, so it needs lots of remodel work. We need painting, we need construction workers, we need doors scraped, refrigerators painted, deep cleaning. We need lots and lots of help as far as getting the building up to speed to get going. We also need financial partners that are willing to come in and invest in our ministry monthly and sus be sustainers of hope, if you will, for the women and their salaries. Um, we also need churches that are willing to volunteer to come and cook lunch on production day. When our ladies come in on the day of production, for, for employment, for job training, where we're actually creating our dried food products, we want to provide them with just a really nice lunch every, every production day. And isn't one of your dreams as you expand to have a cafe, outside cafe, for our, offered to our community? Yes. Yeah, so praise God, my husband, who is actually a pastor as well in the Tri-Cities, but he actually has a culinary degree. So he's behind all of our recipes at Grace Kitchen, and he is a phenomenal cook. So we do. So what we really envision, though, and what we dream is for women living in poverty currently in the Tri-Cities to begin to know their value in Christ, to be able to know 
how dearly loved they are by God to be able to walk in the freedom and identity as a dearly loved child of God and for them to be able to rise up out of poverty, ultimately to stand on their own two feet in the security of Christ, making sustainable wages and no longer relying on government dependency or destructive relationships. That's, great. That's our dream for Grace Kitchen. That's awesome. Great. How many can get behind that kind of dream? Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Wow. Well, we definitely want to partner with you in whatever way that we can. And certainly one of the ways are, are some of the things that you've talked about. If you're a carpenter, if you love to clean, if you love to decorate, um, you need women mentors for these women we do. as they come. So if, if that's something, so just all sorts of different ways and probably ways that we haven't even mentioned now. But you're going to be out at our information center. You have, you have some information brochures set up out there. And so please, if... If it even just kind of sparks your interest and you just kind of go, hmm, I'm not ready to jump in, but I'd like to know more. Be sure and visit Amanda back there. I know that she would love to share more information with you, a little bit more details. But so we can partner that way. But one of the ways that we also want to partner with you is today, our women's ministries um, wants to bless you with a $500 check because we believe in what you're doing. We believe that God is in it. And we want to partner with it. And this is specifically from our IF gathering. And I know that you love IF. <laughs> so we want to bless you Praise in any the way Lord. We can. So let me just share this very quick and then I'll yeah. promise I'll give the mic up. So the Lord actually birthed this vision right out of the IF gathering from Jill Briscoe. If any of you have heard her, I went to go see her at Christ Kitchen in Spokane. And that's where I heard about mm. this amazing ministry. And I chose to bring it right here to the Tri City. So to just get a check from the IF gathering is just. Just so, so important to me. And so, um, it that just is so means, good. <laughs> it means so much. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. As we dial it down here, I want to direct your attention to two things. One is this card again. Would you take that in hand with me? You've maybe had a chance to already fill that out. And as we do each week, we talk about the next step. What's my next step? For some people, uh, weekly, it's different people have different responses. And what's my next step? For some people, it's finding Jesus and choosing to follow him. And that's the next step. You mark that card or getting into a group, you'll see. Or maybe it's water baptism coming up. Uh, it's checking that one as well. Whatever the Lord's saying to you, we just encourage you to consider that. But what I'd like to ask you to do is this, is also on the bottom of this card. I mentioned earlier that the missions conference is the time during the year where we focus on helping challenge people who maybe some are starting to give, maybe they're just learning to tithe, maybe, maybe you've given before, but you've never really targeted your money to missions, towards some of these ministries, and the Lord's kind of speaking to your heart about that. Now would be a great time to put that down here and say, I'd like to begin giving to missions. And so if you put in that little box on the bottom, uh, $25, $50 a month, $100 a month, whatever it is, then, then that will help us to know what God is raising up and bringing so that we can engage and involve even more with some of these local ministries as well as global at faith. And so I thank you for taking the time to do that today. And as you leave this morning, we're going to have you drop these in the basket there, and that will help us. I want to show you one more thing. I've been uh, off Facebook for the last couple months uh, kind of fasting Facebook, and uh, I jumped back on a couple days ago, and the uh, first thing I saw was from Grace Clinic. Grace Clinic is one of our partners locally. They provide health care to those who don't have health care in the Tri-Cities. And it just so happens, Avante uh, Jackson, who's on our board here at Faith, she is uh, one of the executive directors there at the, at the Grace Clinic, and she had posted a picture, I don't know if you saw it or not, but it was a picture of their cupboard where when people come in for health care, many of them are, again, below the poverty level. They need help, and they have a cupboard where they can help people with certain food products and so on. And she had a snapshot on that Facebook page of their cupboard, and in particular, it was the protein section, peanut butter and tuna fish. Peanut butter and tuna fish. They had about three jars of peanut butter left, and a couple cans of tuna. And she said, we need help. And I was walking with that through the day yesterday, and I, 
I told Gail, I said, you know what? I feel like we need to do something. They're one of our partners. We need to help them. And so uh, yesterday afternoon, I went to Costco, and uh, by faith that you would help me on this, uh, Costco peanut butter, two peanut butters is eight ninety nine. And I bought $500 worth of peanut butter and tuna fish. Now, it's kind of funny about that. I want to show you the picture of it. There it is. That's in the back of my wife's SUV. I got to the counter at Costco, and there's people lined up there, and I got all this. And, you know, you hate being behind that guy, right? Who buys, God, my gosh, what's he doing, right? And the lady looks at me, and she goes, what's, uh, did you leave any peanut butter for anybody else? And I, said, I just looked at her, and I said this, keto diet. She about passed out. It was so funny just seeing the look on her face. But uh, I want us today, would you be willing as you leave today for some, if, you know, if everybody today who attends faith gave a buck, just a buck, if everybody gave a buck, we'd cover that no problem today. So here's what I'm going to ask you. As you leave today and you drop the card in, would you throw a buck in? And if a guy, look around you, if there's some guy that looks kind of grumpy like he's not going to do it, give a buck for him too. And just put it in the basket, and together we'll gather this money, we'll pay this, and we're going to bless Grace Clinic today by, by helping supply the cupboard. Stand with me, will you please? <coughs> Father, thank you for stories like these today. The stories of life change. We have opportunity to have fingerprints in the jails, in the homeless situation in our community. Ministering to these people that are dear to your heart, many of them need you so desperately and don't even know it yet. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of a church that's very, very engaged in our community because we recognize it's our mission field. And uh, Lord, thank you for those today who are are going to feel uh, encouraged to maybe step into ministry, to financially support some of these ministries. And uh, Lord, just to know that you're with us, you're providing for us, and uh, you're guiding us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.